Hello. I'm Luke Skywalker, clearly. Um, uh, a few months ago, I was sitting in the Creaster and Factors office. That's effectively our CEO. And I said to him that this is the best job that I've ever had. I love my job. I love my team. Um, and I've never been happier in any job uh, than the one that I'm in at the moment. And obviously he's, um, well, he's from the West Coast, so he kind of bristled a bit at this uh, outpouring of masculine uh, emotion. Uh, so I had to kind of balance things off uh, a little bit and ask him if he enjoyed the rugby at the weekend. Uh, but that aside, this is actually the best job that I've ever had. Um, and uh, none of this, none of what I'm going to say today could have been done without the amazing team that we have uh, and uh, have had at St Andrews. So I just want to kind of outpour my emotion again and just say thank you to, to our team um, and dedicate this to all the people who've been involved in this over the last uh, couple of years. Especially Carly, who couldn't be with us. She was supposed to be with us, but I had to pull out at the last minute. But also to Aaron and Derek and Duncan and Duncan and Emma and Felicity and Finn and Jenny and Lewis and Maria and Neil and Peter and Rob and Sam and Steve. And of course, my mum, <laughs> who's, who's not a Lego figure. Um, so I want to tell you a story about where we've been, the journey that we've been on for the last 10 years. And as all good stories begin, uh, of which there are currently seven, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, well, OK, it was 2006, and it was St Andrews, Scotland, when IE6 ruled the galaxy, we had a website. And what a thing of beauty it was. It was responsive. Well, it was built on a table. Um, uh, I say website. Well, we had about 35 uh, central websites and about 18 school websites. Uh, and they all look different, and many of them were hosted on different servers. Uh, some, pe some of the servers were on people's desks or under their desks. Some were hidden away in cupboards. It was a mess. And so the university uh, employed uh, a web team. Steve uh, was first on board. Uh, I then came on board uh, early 2006. And the university uh, also put together a web steering group um, to guide us through this task of taking the 35 central websites and pulling th them together into to one. Uh, this is roughly what the, the steering group looked like in terms of the hierarchy. We had uh, representation from most of the parts of the university. We had somebody from uh, principal's office. We had a couple of directors. We had people representing schools and units. We had IT services. We had us and the web team who were part of business improvements at the time. This is kind of important. This is the kind of the, the big kind of story arc. L look out for these ones. Um, to see where the influence and where the kind of uh, the power, the decisions were being made about the web. Um, one of the things that we did was we worked uh, on an information architecture. How do we get these 35 websites into, into one? We used a company from Rhode Island in the States called Dynamic Diagrams. Um, at, while they were working on that, we chose a content management system. Uh, and installed Terminal 4 Site Manager version 5.1, I think, back in the day. And we also mind mapped uh, all 35 websites, one of which had over a thousand pages. That was a fun mind map to work on. Um, and we tried to figure out how to get all these sites into the new architecture in Terminal 4. We had about 3,500 pages that we, we moved over in about three months, employing around 19 postgraduate copy and paste elves to help us. And then a week before exams, we launched the website. Here's a top tip. <laughs> Never launch a whole new website the week before exams. Um, 
We felt exhausted, but we were proud of what we'd done. And look at that handsome fella. Well, yeah, right, it looked good in 2007. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the rest of the university didn't uh, exactly share our full enthusiasm. Some of my kind of favorite quotes uh, are, are there about where uh, this is the worst website I've ever seen. <laughs> um, take it down immediately. And my personal favorite was there's a semicolon missing in paragraph three on my biography page. And, um, and then the web steering group, let's just imagine it might be a planet like Alderaan, suddenly disappeared. And we were left kind of wondering, well, what next? Obviously, because we're St. Andrews, we thought that in Latin. Um, <laughs> So about a year later, after we'd kind of settled down and, and watched how things were going, uh, we did a bit of a design tweak. Uh, the principal got her uh, oar in, and uh, the whole, everyone wants to know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, yeah, let's not go there. Um, we'd learned some lessons about about how people were using the website. We moved to a CSS framework. I think we started moving to, uh, to, to, to uh, jQuery and, and kind of trying to standardize things a bit better. Uh, but when people started to see what we were doing, um, the project requests kept coming in and they flooded in and in and in. Hi, could we have some of your shiny, shiny, please? Um, and as it did, we kept a track of them in a spreadsheet and the backlog grew uh, to the point that over a two-day period, we sat down and estimated how long it would take uh, if we were to work on each of these, how long could we clear our back backlog. Um, 13 years. Um, and we had a very honest and frank discussion with our boss saying, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, it really felt like we were chasing our tail uh, and what was really frustrating was that pretty much whoever shouted loudest got what they wanted. Even if uh, we were still working on stuff, our boss would come rushing in and go, you're going to have to stop that. Something else has just come in. Um, and we, um, I remember standing in front of a whiteboard in our office one day saying, how many projects are we actually working on? How many have we got open at the moment? Yeah, 24. That would be 24. No wonder we felt like we were getting nothing completed. So obviously the question is, what do we do? What do we do about that? Uh, well, obviously we grow the team because, you know, throw more resource at it. That works every time. Uh, so we, we grew the team. Uh, we acquired a, a web uh, developer that we stole from Service Desk. Uh, Duncan joined us. I don't know why you're really tiny here, but <laughs> at least you're a, you're a Jedi uh, who then goes over to another university. <laughs> um, uh, we, uh, in 2011, there was a, a restructure. Hooray! We all love restructures. Um, our unit business improvements was uh, merged in with IT services and we entered what we affectionately refer to as the wilderness years. Um, I have to kind of say as a public safety announcement at this point that in order for the story arc to work successfully, IT services here has to take on the role of the antagonist. Uh, they have to take on the role of the empire, the, the baddies, if you will. Um, I also have to point out that technically I am still employed by IT services and I'm just seconded to corporate communications at the moment. So I cannot stress enough that IT services are not evil. <laughs> Although your mileage may vary. Um, so, continuing that story arc, uh, we were now under IT services management. And our new boss didn't kind of fully get what we were doing, didn't fully understand what we were doing, didn't have a kind of digital background or web background. So basically stopped us from doing anything while he got up to speed with what we were doing. Um, and so uh, we were put on support for 
uh, for about two years because we never really reached that, that, that point. Um, we were effectively the most expensive support team in the university. Um, and having put up with that for a year, uh, we dug a tunnel. I've jumped to another film here. I couldn't, couldn't think of a Star Wars thing. Sorry, I'll write to George Lucas and they can put that in the next one. Uh, and I know George Lucas isn't doing Star Wars just now, but we'll just run with that. Um, we effectively, we dug a, a, an escape tunnel to corporate comms. They were totally on board with what we were doing. And in 2013, uh, Duncan uh, left our team and joined Digital Communications. And they built a small team around him to basically work on the projects that we weren't allowed to work on. Um, and they did, and they did a fantastic job. Uh, they worked on the study at St Andrew's website, which was received with great aplomb, and loads of people then started phoning, saying, we want some of that on our website now, please. Um, we, uh, as part of our kind of, I guess, long-term strategy, but also just to kind of hit some, some pain points, we employed Sam, who was a fantastic American developer, uh, who came and joined our team in 2014. Um, so at this point in, in our story, uh, our structure pretty much looked like this in terms of who was making the decisions and where we were in the structure. So poor Peter, who's down here, the web apprentice, there's me, um, at least kind of six levels down from uh, principal's office. And if we wanted to communicate anything that we felt was important with the people in principal's office, the ones who have the purse strings, and the influence, we basically had to play this hierarchical game of Chinese whispers. Um, yeah. So, did it work? Did throwing this new resource, extra resource, to uh, the team fix the issues? Any guesses? What do you think? Did it work? Nobody? I'll give you a clue. Really? Did it? Not, not at all? I'll give you one more chance. Okay. So the problem wasn't the volume of work. Uh, the problem was that we were not doing the right things, and we were not doing the right things the right way. So, um, yeah. We, um, we set about trying to fix that. Um, we had Duncan and his team in corporate comms. We had corporate comms completely on board, and we had, we're, we had some really good relationships with them. Um, we also got involved uh, Rob and Finn, who are, were in our uh, change unit. Um, started off as the lean unit. Um, and they came and they helped, and they were fantastic. Uh, they introduced us to Cotter's eight-step process for leading change. Um, and the, his first two steps, create a sense of urgency and build a guiding coalition, um, were very, very helpful. Um, we already knew there was a sense of urgency. Um, mobile. Um, we were really failing in the whole mobile thing. It was something that we'd been desperate to do for at least two or three years, and we'd just been stopped. Um, Duncan and his team were, were doing an amazing job in getting the, the study at St Andrew's site mobile friendly, but nothing else had happened there. Um, to help create the, the sense of urgency, we got this chap in, um, uh, and he basically sat down with our boss and to his face said, you are the problem. And it was a really brave and quite uncomfortable meeting but it really got things moving. So the first task was to, uh, to merge the teams, and we got permission to merge the teams. Um, oh, like. um, we merged the teams, and part of that meant that we needed to be seconded from uh, IT services to um, corporate comms. So we had to move away from IT services. Boom. That was, I, I kind of really did expect more of a dramatic uh, appreciation <laughs> to that slide than I received, but you know, I'll just, I'll, inside I'm, I'm happy. 
Um, we co-located. Uh, that took a bit of a, while, a, bit of a time. Uh, St Andrews is basically embedded within a medieval town, so finding enough room uh, for eight, seven, seven of us um, was, was a bit of a challenge. Uh, Duncan and his team were literally housed in a small cottage next to the cinema uh, with doors this height. Uh, but we found we got some space in the old medical school and uh, we then began to look at uh, redesigning how work comes to us. Um, the first thing that we did, or one of the first things that we did with this, was to basically map our engagement process. How does work come to us? How do requests come to us? And we spent, uh, I think, a couple of days in the arts building uh, basically mapping out exactly. So I think the top, the top one from the pink onwards uh, is the web team process, and the yellow one, I think, is the, is the digicoms. And we basically tried to work out uh, a new process for, for, for uh, receiving any requests to us about any type of work. And we, we mapped it and we redesigned it and simplified the whole thing. So that basically all our requests now, if it's not to do with uh, an, a current in-flight project, all requests come in to us as support calls. And in order to deal that with that, in order to also to free up the rest of the team to work on project work, um, we, uh, we started off with one person working full-time in support, Peter, and then we employed Duncan, not that Duncan, it gets confusing, um, to, to, to work alongside him. Not, not only that, but every time I think of them, I think of Peter Duncan from Blue Pier. <laughs> They even sit like Peter Duncan, it's like Ant and Deg. Um, so they work full time pretty much in support uh, and free up the rest of the team to, to, to work on projects. Uh, the next thing that we did was we looked at what, well, what do we do and we separated things into business as usual and project work. It's kind of the P3O model. Uh, you run the business, business as usual, and you change the business. Uh, through project work, which then feeds into and becomes business as usual. Um, and, and in that, we also adopted a matrix model of management, so that business as usual is line managed through corporate communications, and project work had to be managed by a portfolio board, which didn't exist at the time. Um, so that was the next piece of work. So Finn and Rob from the change unit then went away and, and worked with us, uh, pulled us into various bits and places, basically to create a portfolio uh, office for, for our projects. And they came up with this, which is magic. Um, they built uh, a workflow to take any ideas about projects and how we would then run them through to deployment and beyond. Um, and they used the DSDM, Agile Project Management methodology. Um, as part of that. So basically what happens is now if people want us to do something they have to submit an idea which is basically a kind of boss card um, that, that says uh, what the idea is and what the backgrounds are and kind of basic risks and stuff like that and then they email that into to service desk. The first thing that we do with it is we first ask the question, well, is this a piece of work for us? And we have various criteria. This meeting for, bu for building this process was, I thought was fantastic. It was just kind of one of those quest thing that went just round in circles and we felt like we were getting nowhere and then it all just like came together. So basically we ask, is this work e-enabled? Is it largely to do with content publication? Is it largely to do with user experience? Uh, does it require minimum applications development? Because if it needs a lot of applications development, then it goes over to IT services to their development team. Um, does it require minimum network infrastructure or security development? And then the kind of catch-all for other things uh, is it, it, it must not be part of another project or portfolio because we were finding that people were trying to sneak things. They were getting dropped by other portfolios and they were trying to sneak them uh, our way, or things were getting stalled somewhere else, and they thought a quick win would be to get it into our portfolio. So basically, if it passes all of these, it then has to pass just one of these uh, 
to determine whether we run it as a project or do we run it just as a kind of small business as usual kind of quick fix. Um, if it gets through that, we've then got evaluation criteria. Um, and I, I can't remember how many there are. There's like about 11 categories or something. And we basically go through that and give, give each, uh, each element a score that gives, uh, that gives us a, f a final total that kind of gives us a sense of, of the priority. Uh, because the evaluation criteria are also marked against the university strategy. So we're now moving away from whoever shouts loudest to we're, we're, we're doing work that is uh, being evaluated against the university st strategy. So we should now just be doing strategically important work. We also kind of run it through a project complexity model that gives us a sense of the size of it. Um, we kind of think in terms of small, medium, and large projects. And, and on the whole, we try to work on uh, a minimum of two, well, well actually, a maximum of two uh, projects um, at any time. I think at the moment, we're just running one, because it's huge. Um, and all of this uh, goes into a Google spreadsheet that then drives our uh, monitoring system. And the monitoring system, uh, is available to all members of staff, so they can just log in and see some of the information about what the project is, where it is, who's project managing it, and uh, kind of the basic latest statistics. They can also click through to, uh, to any of the documentation, so project reports and terms of references and business cases and stuff like that. Um, so we've got this, uh, this, this workflow, and so far it's been a really good success. Um, it's kind of like, we kind of think of it like as a kind of sausage machine, a kind of process machine. Um, to give you some idea, um, I hope this is going to work, to give you some idea, one of our, our colleagues created this short video. Let's see if this will work. The last thing that um, was delivered as part of our uh, uh, portfolio board was a scaling strategy. So basically, if the team needs to grow any bigger for us to take on more, more work, uh, there was a, a document created to basically plan how we might expand, um, which we've not got to yet, but we might as we slowly take over the university. Um, the other thing that we, uh, we did, so that was basically making sure that we do the right things. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we did the right things the right way. Um, and we decided that we wanted to, to try this agile thing. Um, I'd kind of been dabbling with it from, from about 2008. Um, I found this book really useful. Um, we, we adopted, as I said, DSDM, which gives us a really good kind of uh, touch points on, on most areas of project management. Um, Scrum assumes that you've got a backlog of stuff. DSDM helps you kind of get the backlog of stuff into some semblance of order. Um, it runs on, on eight basic principles, which are fairly uh, straightforward and uh, are things that we're, we're trying to kind of keep to. Uh, and it has this uh, lovely diagram uh, where you start with kind of pre-project stuff. There's then a decision gate at our portfolio board. Is this a good idea? It then goes through to some kind of feasibility and foundations. There's then another uh, stop ga uh, gap there, uh, a gate, decision gate for uh, business cases. And if it then goes through that, we then can, can run things through exploration, engineering, and deployment, which is that kind of iterative, uh, agile thing. It's also got this lovely uh, 
way of describing how teams work and how our management interacts with us, which, depending on which course you've been on, that's either the alien baby or the snowman. Um, and, and that basically takes us up to, to, to where we are now. We've got a team of 10. Um, everyone there has been uh, trained in DSDM. Uh, our boss has been trained in DSDM because she wanted to understand how it all worked, and she can now understand the weird agile speak that we talk. And we have the DCPB, the Digital Communications Portfolio Board, which meet, meets every six weeks or so to discuss uh, in-flight projects, to, to, to kind of input the strategic stuff that's going on at university level. And this is, the, uh, this is where we are now. We're kind of back to where we were in that we've got um, principal's office support. We've also got VP support um, at principal's office level. We've got people, uh, we've got directors, deputy directors, we've got three members of the digital comms team. We've got somebody who's a pro program uh, manager for a, a big university-wide project. He's the assistant registrar. Um, and so far, it seems to be working really well. Um, um, we, we now have discussions about digital with people who really matter and can make decisions. We've now got people in principal's office who are thinking about digital and web stuff. Um, and, and some of the discussions that we have are also having knock-on effects to other parts of the university. So the, the, the digital requirements uh, are now driving change in other processes, like how programs are approved uh, for courses, when fees are set, uh, how degrees are advertised. And it's just a really exciting uh, place to be. It kind of feels like we are now in a place where we are doing the right things and we're doing them the right way. Um, we blog about this uh, every week. Um, so if you want to kind of follow our adventures, uh, we're on the digital communications uh, blog, and that's me. <laughs> that's right. We've got time for one, maybe two questions. <laughs> um, I was just curious. Um, so, if you, whatever you call your VC, the person at the top, if they want something doing, they have to fill out one of those forms. Is that actually what happens? We actually don't have a VC at the moment. Uh. She's coming in September. Um, pretty much. Cause, uh, cause It'd be I interesting to see, see it work, but that's the process. I couldn't see it happening in our place, you know. It's, uh, but maybe that's, there's a responsiveness there that is, is a pain in the, in the backside. You know, we, we have to listen to the people who are senior who shout loud, yeah. but it, maybe it does you know, is there a chance that perhaps you might miss out on that ability to move quickly if you're having to run stuff through a committee? No, well, we meet every six weeks, every four to six weeks. Um, and we have pretty much been responding to, we, we presented a business case that said, we want to do this program of projects in this order and this is why. And, uh, you know, things happened and other strategies kind of impacted it and we had to change things around. So it really does feel like we are being able to respond quickly. Uh, and, and I think the, the question with the, the fact that we've got two members of principal's office on the board means that those conversations uh, about, oh, we should have X, Y, or Z actually happen at a higher level than us. And those two members of the board can then kind of pick that up and say, well, actually, you know, this is where uh, we're heading. And they've, so far, they've been really good at just holding off and, and really supporting what we're doing. Thank you. I'm intrigued. I want to know more. So, so do I. Cheers. <laughs> Any more? Okay, thank you very much to Garth. Maybe another round of applause. Thank you all.